My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. It has no value to you, it has great value to me and the dogs that I'm going to be rescuing in the future when I can get um, my rescue going um, and sanctuary going. So, uh, moving right into it here. Uh, cryptocurrency coin market, uh, 172 billion uh, right now. Bitcoin's at 5102. Ethereum went down to 163. Um, and I did some trading on my last one uh, that I was showing you, some trades that I did. Uh, and I did, was, and I was six out of six on those trades. So it's going good for me right now. So just kind of giving you an overall feeling. This is kind of what I do when I first get in to start trading for the day. I'll look into what's been going on for the past week because this is a seven day price graph on the right here. Um, and I'm just kind of looking at how things have gone. So it did make a correction down. Um, I believe it did not even hit the 5,000 mark. Um, and the reason why I remember that is um, uh, Crypto Crow. If you guys follow Crypto Crow, there's a lot of people that follow Crypto Crow. Um, he sold his Bitcoin at $5,011, and he made a video on it. Um, and, of course, he said he's probably wrong. And, and sure enough, he was absolutely wrong. Um, and I don't understand how he's being wrong because, you know, with a great computer setup he has, four screens and all this stuff he's threw all this money into, um, you shouldn't be selling out a $5,000 Bitcoin if you don't know, um, exactly what's going on or how, uh, you know, I'm not going to say he doesn't know how to trade, but maybe he doesn't understand what he's looking at. So let's move right into it. You know, I showed you last time on my last video that I had six trades and, you know, they're, they're obviously still here. Um, nothing goes away, um, from my little drawings here, um, when I'm going in. So that was my last trade right there. Um, cause that was pretty much done. I kind of thought that that, that it hit a precipice, um, and whether it's going to correct or not, it, you know, this is a theorem to USD, um, starting way down here, you know, even back down here, it was at 132 when I started trading and it went all the way up to 180 and now it's corrected back down to, you know, to 164. Now I just wanted on this video, obviously I'm not ready to trade yet. Obviously it's not, you know, it looks like it's starting to condense a little bit. So something may be happening. But I just wanted to show you what I'm looking at here. Um, and let me get my big head out of the way. Um, I just want to show you what I was looking at here um, as far as when's the next time to start looking at things and understanding these indicators. It's simple as that, just understanding where these indicators are. And that's going to tell you when, you know, you possibly can, can move in for a buy, right? I'm just doing simple buys here, you know, maybe putting a stop loss in every now and then. Um, for the most part, more stop losses than not, but um, I, I go with the trend. So if it's going up, the trend's going up, then obviously it's telling me to buy. And I have other videos on that. Um, and probably if you look in the top right corner, you can click on it to see those, to know the strategy of when everything's going on a downtrend or a correction, that's the time to sell. It's not time to buy. Everybody is you know, looking for a time to buy. It just says, get ready to buy is what that means. Just get ready for it. Um, Again, the red is the 10 as the 10 MA, the blue is the 100 MA, and my MACD is set for 10 and 100 as well for my fast and slow convergence divergence lines. So last time uh, I was kind of telling you, okay, that was it. It kind of hit a precipice. I think I'm done. Uh, and that was, I was kind of looking at this one from an hourly chart. Um, if you can't see it, I'll kind of move in a little bit so you guys can kind of see what I'm saying. So I sold out there and luckily when it came back down here, um, I was at work, so I didn't really have time to look at it anyways, which is why I like swing trading it's because when you're out, you're out, you're, you're not wasting any money. Um, and if it goes up, you know, you just have to, you know, you have your one Ethereum. So, um, you know, I do one Ethereum to USD and then I always turn my, you know, USD back into Ethereum and then keep the profit, whatever's there. And, um, so at this one, I didn't keep any profit cause this is, I just put, took an Ethereum out and I'm trading with this Ethereum just for the sake of YouTube and for you guys. So you guys understand what I'm doing um, and how I'm looking at things. So getting back into it here, as you can see, remember I was kind of touched on the Fibonacci last time. This was the run that it did right on a, on a nice run. I mean, I could have probably started it down here, but I, I say the pump started right here. So it was a big pump um, that started the wave and that waved and it kind of waved and it kind of waved and then it was done. So it looks like I only did two waves. All right, correction went down and then back up. So two two waves. So after those two waves, I put in this Fibonacci so I know where the high point is and where the low point is from this run. And as I said, sorry about that. As I said before, when you have it on the halfway mark, which really means nothing in Fibonacci, 
But in the stock market and coin markets, if it crosses that 50 line, right, you don't see anything really crossing it or breaking that 50 line, it will be considered on a downtrend and all this new money that came in got eaten up and got taken out. So that's, uh, and then people get scared once they, you know, it's uh, professional traders. When it goes down that past that 50, they're out. They're, they're starting to sell out everything they won't need or everything they want because they don't want to, you know, the probabilities that it's going to keep going down to the 382 is more probable than not. And as you can see on the 382, it's on the 100 line. You know, it crossed over the 100 line. So now it's right in between at the moment where the 100 MA is. It's underneath the 50. So it's coming up. As I was saying on my last video, it's the the 100 line acts as a baseline. And I'm just, again, I want to show you guys kind of how I'm looking at things. So the, it acts as a baseline, right? And when it's flat, it is the baseline. It's a, it's a, a strong support resistant um, baseline. And now it's going up, right? Because the wave went up. So obviously it's on a strong power move. It's on a strong power move. And what I mentioned last time is that the, the 100 has to come up to meet the candles or the candles have to come down or a little bit of both, right? A little bit of mix of both. And that's kind of exactly what happened. It's coming down and now it's going sideways. But as you can see, the 100 MA is still coming up to meet it. And now it's coming to a precipice. So I'm starting to look at it today to see on my four hour chart to see if there's somewhere that I can come in and, um, and make some money, right? To buy in and then sell out hopefully up here. So I'm waiting for it to hit a precipice. If it hits the blue line and it breaks it, it's still considered on a downtrend unless it obviously pops back up over the blue line and goes. So this is kind of a time you want to start looking at things is when the 10 and the 100 start coming to meet each other, starting to get closer to each other. The 100 has a magnetic effect. It's not like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's true magnet, magnetism that if the candle comes down here, it's got to move away. It's just saying that it can't stay at the 100. So it's, it, but it has to come back down because the 100 is always, it's an average. So it has to come through and cut through these sooner or later, just like the, just like the 10 MA does on a slower or on a faster um, average, obviously 10 day average as opposed to 100 day average, but it's an average. So therefore the candles or the 100 MA come up or come down to meet or a little mix of both. And that's exactly what is going on at this point. It dropped underneath, it's on the sell point, this is coming up, it's starting to come to a precipice and everything's starting to condense and consolidate again. So that's kind of what I was saying about the consolidation of it. And as you can see right here, that was the sell point on the MACD was right here when it hit that red, right? Didn't break the red and then right here, it caused the rally of sells. And now it's going sideways right now. Is it condensing to go up or is it you know gonna hit a precipice because we're getting close to that 50 line, right? And if it breaks that 50 line, it's pretty much going to break the 100 line and it's going to be considered on a downtrend. Um, short term, long term, we don't know, but it, that's what we're looking at on a four hour chart. So at this point, I'm not I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting for something to happen. It breaks up over the red and turns green. This is starting to go up on an on a upswing and it crossed over for a sell point. So these things is the things that I'm looking for in order to get in. It's very easy. Simplify your trading. Don't make it hard. Just remember, you got to understand what these are, how they're used, and exactly what they're doing. Um, so that's the indicators that I use. The 10MA, the 100MA, which I used to use the 20 and the 200, but I, I seem to were losing and, and missing out on, on good profits. So I tightened it up to 10100, and it's doing great for me right now. And the same thing with my MACD. I just turned it to 10100, and it works great based on the 10100MAs. Um, and the convergence divergence line. So that's, in a nutshell, the indicators I use. Now, the candle language is the other thing that I use. That's the other indicator that's obviously right there. You don't have to add anything. Um, and it's obviously a base probability for me. This is what I add my probabilities in from these bases, from the 10, 100, the MACD, and the candle language. Those are really the ones that I use. And I'll use other things when I, if I get a little iffy on some real sketchy trades that I started in. Um, but for the most part, I stay to the process, stay to the criteria, and it works. Man, I, I tell you what, it works 8 out of 10 times on average for me. Sometimes 7 out of 10, sometimes 6 out of 10, but it's never 5 out of 10 or lower. Never. 
So I'm kind of averaging at about eight out of 10 right now, seven and a half, so eight out of 10. So I round up. Um, so, so getting into it here, right? Let's look into some candle language here. All right. And we've really got to understand what these candles and what is going on in these candles, right? I always call them bars, but they're, they're candles, right? So I just want to kind of, you know, and, and you guys obviously know red means that it's uh, the buyer or the sellers won the day, right? So greens are buyers, right? And it's making it go up and sellers are red. So what happened here? So let's look into this green one right here. So this green one was kind of a half and half um, bull. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not even a half and half. That candle is on the butter. So it's actually a weak, um, it's a weak candle for being a buy candle, right? There was a fight in there. The greens took it all the way up to here on the candle and the reds put it all the way back down. And then, it, you know, the greens won the day, but they barely won the day. So what happens? It actually starts um, on the bottom and works its way up. So, or actually, no, it started down up here green. And right away, the reds ate it up, right? It was a fight all the way down to here. And then the reds took, took it down all the way down to here. And then there was another fight with this wick. And it came all the way back up, right? And closed right there in red. That's where the... That's where the closing is. So it came all the way back up and closed on the red. So yeah, I always get them a little confused when I'm talking about them, but on the bottom is where the reds close. So the next one started, where does it start? It starts right here. It went all the way down. There was a little fight and at the end of that candle, it closed right here. So you gotta understand what these candles are actually saying, that there was a fight between the greens and the reds, the buyers and the sellers, and the sellers won the day, but it was getting eaten up at the end of the day or at the end of this candle by the greens. So what happened? Well, this one turned green right here, right? Um, it could have turned red and the greens obviously took it over, which kind of looks like that's what it did. So it started here. Um, they brought it all the way down here. The greens brought it all the way up. Then it had another battle and it closed right there on the green. So closing on the greens are on the top, closing on the reds are on the bottom. So you really got to understand what's going on here when, and who's winning the day, barely, or a lot, right? So the Reds took this bar over, right? They started it um, straight out the gate red, came all the way down here, but then the Greens came up to battle it. It was kind of a zero to zero, you know, battle. So they can't really show you that, you know, big red bar or anything. And then it closes right there. It starts right here. There was a battle. Came all the way down here. There was a battle again, and the reds barely took the day. See what I mean? It's weak. It's a weak red one that the greens were eating it up right at the end of it. But the reds, by the time the candle ended, the reds took the day. So the next candle started, and it was green. I'm sorry, it started red. Barely red, and then boom, it started coming down. You see these little wicks on the top and on the bottom, if you can't see that. These wicks on the top and bottom really indicate where it started from. And, you know, these are things that I'm starting to train on to get more language on it um, and get these patternistic languages that everybody says, oh, there's a pattern. This and this means this is what's coming. The probabilities of that happening apparently is like 52% to 48%. So, yeah, they're giving you the edge on it, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen, especially on the crypto market. Those little candle languages that you're talking about, that's stock market. And obviously, crypto market's way more volatile, so the language is a little more daring, um, you know, on the, uh, the languages. It's, it, it's more obvious to see. Um, and there's no patternistics to it. You know, you can say, oh, you know, this and this means that, but no, that, that, that doesn't work that way, you know, five times, six times out of 10. It's just half and half for the most part with barely a little bit of probability on there. So um, learn your languages, learn your candle languages, learn what your 10 and your 100 MA actually mean. Learn what your MACD actually means and what the convergence divergence lines mean and what the big gap between it means. What's the crossover between the blue and the orange uh, going up and the blue and the orange going down? You start learning all these things and you put them together, it becomes like training. You know what I mean? Like you're playing baseball and you're throwing a ball, you know, pitching and you're throwing curveballs and you're training to cur throw that curveball. Sooner or later, you're going to know how to throw that curveball without even hardly thinking. So that's what we're getting into. Um, with these stock trades. So again, I'm not ready to, to buy in. I am looking at things to see if it's coming to a precipice where everything might be up on a on an upswing. So as you can see on the MACD, it's come all the way up here, 
from this way down low point, it stayed up high like a nice big bull run, you know, short bull run, and now it's coming back down for a correction, and it actually really didn't correct that much as opposed to how far down the MACD is. So it's about start, started at that start point um, from the bull run um, that I started with my Fibonacci in there. So um, it, is it coming to a precipice or is it just going to relax again like this MACD did um, for a while? So it, it kind of indicates some kind of what I need to do. And this is uh, things I guess I didn't reiterate on the last one, but as you can see, if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're looking at a four hour chart, look how close that MACD is, um, you know, the convergence divergence line, it's so close, right? So that's why a lot of these trades, I went into one hour charts and started on the one hour chart, right? Some of them I started on the four hour chart on this small one, but I'd always move into my one hour, five hour, or five minute to kind of find out and see what exactly is going on here and do I need to get scared or just kind of hold on. Um, so it's it's telling me all these things um, based on how I started training or what I'm looking at if I'm getting scared, right? That's so, you know, if, if I'm scared, so say I bought in, right? And I'm scared that it's gonna go down right here, right? I'm not gonna keep looking at the four hour chart. If I'm, if I'm looking for a buy point or a sell point, right? Cause I'm getting scared. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, obviously I'll probably have a stop loss in here somewhere, but it, it just, you know, if, if say I don't at this point and I'm getting scared and I'm looking to just get out before I, I hit my stop loss, I'll just zoom into a one hour chart just to see, oops, that's a two hour chart, um, just to see where exactly everything is. And as you can see, it crossed under after it um, was on that correction and crossed under the blue now it's just under the blue and the blue's going down to meet the candles and it's all consolidating so now the blue is going to work as a resistant point on there so now it has to break the resistant point to be considered on a bull run on this one hour chart so you know a lot of things are telling me that it's probably going to go sideways for a while and possibly go more down so this, this is on a downswing this is kind of going sideways but more on a downswing this is all consolidating it already hit a buy point, so it's looking. To, it's going to hit a sell point, um, more or not, more more probability than not. Um, not saying it's going to, because it could gap back up and go. But this is going to act as a resistant point, so it's going to hit that, and that's kind of like a precipice for me. Is is it going to break over that blue, and should I start looking for a buy point when it starts doing here, or, you know, should I just sell out, right? So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And because it's going sideways, it's consolidating. I'm waiting for something significant to happen, like a sell point. Tells me a sell point to get out. I'm going to move into my five minute chart and I'm going to look into that and tell me what is that telling me to do? Because I'm getting close to a point. Because, um, you know, on the one hour chart, the MACD told me that it was getting to a sell point. Let's say it did that. Let's say it said that. So then I want to come down here and actually look in my five minute chart to find out what exactly you know is, is it going on on a short term basis on a 10 15 minute term basis so now as you can see it broke the blue on the five minute and then the reds took it out and it, you know it's because it's a resistant point it's a it's a strong support resistant line this is your baseline support resistant line so it broke the baseline support resistant line but the next one it did not it came back down it broke down underneath it it broke down underneath that and the blue and the red and now it's just kind of consolidating. So they're getting together. So it's, it's a good time to watch this to see what's going on. Is it going to go back up on a, on a small bull run or another uptrend? Or is it going to stay on this downtrend coming down and, and or going sideways? So it has to do one of the three, right? Up, down, or sideways. So I'm hoping that it goes up. So I'm waiting, looking for a sell, a buy point at this point. If it keeps going sideways, I'm just going to hold on. And if it goes down, you'd want to sell out. If I had gone in. Uh, a buy point right now. So I'm, I'm not in a buy point. So that's why I'm looking at a four hour chart to see if I can find a bowl of buy point on my four hour chart. And then just look at this four hour chart after I buy it um, to make sure that it's, it's staying within my swing trade um, time limits. These green ones is I gave myself a kind of time limits to say, hey, you know, your swing trades kind of getting done. Take your profits and move, move on to the next one um, if you can't. So it tells me how I need to start thinking these lines. It tells me, it just keeps me in line with my criteria. It really does. So, you know, I'll, you know when I get to day trades, obviously these bars shorten up um, to, in five minute charts. So, and then I use five minute charts. So um, it's gonna be faster trades, so on and so forth. But right now, again, like I said, I'm honing my skills in this 
And uh, I just want everybody to see that. Now, what are other factors that I'm using as far as these indicators and candle language, right? It's the crypto fear and greed index. That's one of the things that I actually use. You know, obviously greed, 62 today. Yesterday was 42, which is why I wasn't really even looking at things too hard. And greed last week um, and then greed last month, 69 and 58. So going down here, look at that big drop. I mean, it just dropped because of the correction. And now it's back up to some greed because it's going sideways and consolidating. So it's a good sign today. It's at 62 for the sentiment analysis. And then you have your fundamental analysis that you should know. Again, I mine Ethereum, so I'm very intimate with Ethereum. I understand how Ethereum works on a fundamental basis in a roundabout way. I don't know everything about you know what's going on, but I obviously know um, enough uh, about this based on mining. I have to know all these things um, for you know investing, trading, mining, um, whatever I'm doing. So with crypto, so it helps me out. I'm not as intimate you know with other coins. You know, even though I'm holding a lot of other coins, you know, I have Stellar. Um, I have Litecoin, I have Neo, I have Tron, I have um, some Monero, I, you know, I have, you know, Denticoin, some Ontology, um, you know, I'm holding a lot of different, you know, top 20 bags, um, and if not top 100 bags on there, but I'm not that intimate with these other ones um, that much, right? Enough for me to help me trade when it comes to an upward, you know, a uptrend market or downtrend market, but one of these markets, you know, because we're so volatile in crypto, I do not play these sideways markets, even though I could probably make, you know, a buck or two uh, or four, you know what I mean, on these. No, uh, I'm, I'm looking for timelines. As you can see the green here, I, I swung trade in that and I made like $8 profit on there. And then I swung trade within this timeline, like one, two, three times. Um, and, you know, I made good money on here and I swung trade within this timeline and I, I got out right there and look what happened. Didn't even break um, where I even uh, sold out at. And then it went back down for a correction based on what everything was telling me. I mean, it went to a sell point right here. It was already at a, you know, it was over here. So I bought already in and then I sold out when I thought I hit a precipice that it was gapped away. The MACD was pretty much done with its gapping away from each other and it's going to start coming back to meet um, the divergence line. So learn what everything means when you're doing trading. Learn what, what you're doing and be confident in your trading. If you're not confident, like I'm not in a sideways market, unless I'm playing an hour or five minute charts, which I don't play right now because I'm honing my skill. And this is what you got to do. You got to be disciplined. Don't chase after things. Let the money come to you and make simple trades based on your indicators and your fundamental and sentiment analysis. That's really all I do. Simple. It's not easy. It's simple. So I just want to touch on that to, uh, uh, today so you guys uh, know what I've been doing and uh, what everything has been coming up um, for the past three days that I haven't done a video. And, you know, there's no reason because I want to base these next videos on actual trading to show you that the method is tried and true. That's really all I want to show you guys. So, um, you know, my name is Crypto Dog to the rest of you. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. Has no value to me. Um, or to you and has great value to me. You guys keep up the grind.